Welcome back for another video with the Mini Electric. It's only my second week of ownership, so uh, lots to cover. One of the first things I've been asked for my first video was about efficiency and range of the car. Well, the more efficiency you get from the car, the better range you'll get as well. So if you're looking to extend the range for any reason, then what you're gonna want is to be more efficient with the car. So how do you go about being more efficient? Now, yes, I know there are some people that just want to use the car, just want to drive it, and they want to drive it like they stole it and have lots of fun, in which case efficiency isn't for you and it's not your thing. But if you do want to go a little bit further and you do want to improve efficiency, then here are my tips. Now let's uh, start with a caveat. I'm not a BMW expert, I'm not a mini expert. I've only owned the car for a couple of weeks, so I don't know all of the technical issues about the car yet but i am a very efficient very effective driver at getting good efficiency in evs and i've got a good history of that so i have a good driving style that i can help with and there are a lot of the features in the mini that are very very similar and relevant to other electric cars it's it's not going to be doing anything massively different to other electric cars first thing to talk about are drive modes. In most EVs you've got Sport, Normal and Green and Green Plus, those sort of things. Most cars have their own names for those sort of modes. But those modes aren't really for flicking into one or the other and it's magically going to give you better efficiency. And that's a misconception by many people I think, that they just press the button and expect the car to do the work for them. They expect it to suddenly be efficient. Well that's not the case. Being efficient or not is down to you as the driver. It's, uh, it assists you by having one of the modes that limits the heating controls, and that's the green or green plus, where it can uh, set a speed limit, it can give you a speed warning, it can limit the amount of power that's used for the heating controls. So all of those things help to give you more efficiency, but you can do the same as those modes anyway, just by turning the uh, heating down, by turning the heater off, by being more gentle on the throttle. In theory, you can get exactly the same efficiency in sport mode as you can in green plus mode. It depends how you drive the car. So those modes are just a help for you. And to be honest, I find those modes are more about the driving experience. If you like the sharper um, throttle response and the maximum performance, then sport mode's for you. If you want the extra efficiency and you just want a really smooth drive with a slightly dulled down throttle response, then probably the green mode, the you know, economy mode, is the one for you. And if you like the midway point, well, that's normal, isn't it? And the same for regen. I don't think the regen modes of high or low will really affect your efficiency much because in low efficiency mode, you can still come to an almost stop at junctions. You just have to anticipate more and therefore brake using regen, a lower level of regen, for a longer period of time. If you're in high regen mode, you're going to get more kilowatts regen, but for a shorter period of time because it's, um, it's a bit sharper and harsher, isn't it? You've got more power being regenerated, but it's just for a shorter period of time. So the two probably equal out. The only time when regen modes will make a difference is if one blends in friction brakes more than the other, or one encourages you to brake in a way that uses the friction brakes more than if you just use regen. So if there are technically any um, differences between the two modes of blending the friction brakes on low or high regen, it'd be really nice to know that because then I would avoid the mode that does it, because the other would be more efficient. But I've read the manual so far and it doesn't actually describe that and you'd have to go to one of the, the really techie manuals that only the senior technicians, not necessarily in the dealers even, that would have access to. So it's internal proprietary information from BMW. You're not likely to get it, unfortunately. So we've got regen and we've got the drive modes that don't really control the efficiency of the car. It is your right foot. So it is how far you press the accelerator and how quickly you do it. So I'm, I'm going up a hill slightly here. It's a, um, a minor incline. Now if I accelerate, then obviously I'll be using more power because it's, it's, it's uphill and acceleration uses more power. But at the moment I'm driving 
as gently as I possibly can. I can't quite get it onto coasting because I'm going uphill. I'll start to decelerate. So to keeping a steady speed, I need a, a certain level of power. But it's it's into the first yellow bar only. So keeping in the lower levels of e-power will consume less energy and a nice steady drive will give you better efficiency. There are two things on the Mini that can help you drive efficiently and that's by basically driving in coasting mode and to use as little energy as possible. One, you've got a little dial on your power gauge on the left hand side of your dash um, where if you accelerate it goes up into the e-power area of those yellow bars and if you let your foot off the accelerator then you'll be down into the charge area as it's regenning. And if you modulate the throttle into the middle then it's into ready and that's coasting. So that's one gauge. The more you keep it in charge and ready, the more efficiency you'll get, the more you have it into e-power, the higher up the e-power, the worse efficiency you'll get. But you've also got this um, image here of a Mini in e-drive. So if you're over on the media screen, then you can bring that image of the Mini up where as you're accelerating, the front wheels will turn yellow and there's an arrow indicating that you're progressing forward. That's indicating that you're using power if you go into regen mode, the uh, wheels are still yellow, but there's an indication there that instead of going forward, that there's regen re recuperating energy back into the battery. And if you're in coasting mode, then there's no yellow on the wheels at all. That's a really good gauge because it's instantaneous. It updates instantly on your throttle. And therefore, you can use it as a gauge as to whether you're driving efficiently or not. If you're trying to balance that throttle into regen mode, So those, are, those things aren't gonna necessarily make the car more efficient, but it encourages you to drive in a way that is more efficient. One of the biggest factors for efficiency is air density and uh, how much power you have to use to push through the air. So in colder, damper conditions, then the air density is thicker and heavier and therefore it takes more energy to push through. That's partly why you get worse efficiency in winter conditions. And then equally the same with temperature. The battery chemistry just doesn't work as well. You don't get as much power out of the battery in cold conditions. And that's a, a chemical, physical issue. So that's why we like to warm up the battery. So on longer journeys, the battery will gradually warm up because as you use the battery, it's generating heat, that's wasted energy. But the more it soaks into the battery, then the battery will get more efficient and you get better efficiency in the long run. And this leads us to a question about preconditioning. I think there's um, a lot of myths with a lot of manufacturers that preconditioning a car also preconditions the battery, where mostly it's a presumption. The manuals don't actually tell you that it does that. So yes, some BMW salesman or technician might tell you it does, but it doesn't necessarily mean that that's how it really works. Because that information is again quite secret to the manufacturer. They keep it to themselves, how the system really, really works. If you could, recon you could precondition the battery and warm the battery, and you could control it, then surely it would be in the owner's manual. But if someone's got any factual information, some proof about whether it does or whether it doesn't, I'd really like to hear from them. I'd really like to see that proof to know the conditions of when the BMW Mini battery heater is used or not, and can you control it? Because the benefit of preconditioning is that you're using your house energy to heat the car up rather than using the battery on the car to heat the car up. So you're gonna get better efficiency because you've already pre-warmed the car up using the house energy. Anyway, there you go. There's my thoughts on efficiency in the Mini. It's all down to you and your foot on the throttle and how much anticipation you do at junctions, keeping a nice, steady, smooth drive. Hope that was useful, hope you liked that. If you did, please click the like button and uh, of course subscribe for more videos. Thanks for watching and see you all again soon. Bye for now.